That's the Maple Leaf Rag, written by Scott Joplin. He shaped the early days of public television and leveraged his passion for ragtime and entertaining into an amazing career. Welcome to the playlist, Max. Thank you, Karen. Really great to have you here. Why, well, my pleasure. So tell me about your early days and music. How did ragtime music grab you? Well, I learned to play ragtime from my mother. She was from Iowa. And she moved to Colorado when she was 19 years old and was playing silent movie music in the Princess Theater in Colorado Springs. And when she went to Colorado, she took along a piano bench full of ragtime piano sheets. Well, she played, she was good. She was a school piano. She always said my mother, who became a journalist, not only knew how to spell, but she had a great left hand. <laughs> I'd hear her playing and I had to learn what she was doing, and one of them was Scott Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag, which is one of the most difficult rags. So I learned to play it when I was, I don't know, 10, 12 years old. And then I went on into jazz and popular music and this and that and went to college and so forth. But meanwhile, that kind of intoxication that comes with the syncopations of ragtime was embedded in me and I was able to turn it into a gig. When you talk about ragtime, you're not talking about a, just a specific rhythm. You're talking about a whole kind of set of things. Yes, I think ragtime, like a lot of the other words we, we use to describe popular music, lost its musical meaning, those early sheet music things, and became a generic thing, a meme, as they say today. Uh, it defined an era. It defined the period from 1920, or from 1900 to 1920, and for instance, in the work of E.L. Doctorow, writing a novel called Ragtime to describe an era. And that kind of became part of my f point of view. So you parlayed that a little bit into a PBS, before PBS, NET, uh, whole production. How many episodes on the Ragtime era? Well, the Ragtime Era was a 12-program, half-hour program that aired in fall of 1960. Ragtime. The word still has an excitement about it, doesn't it? A charm. Makes you think not just of a kind of music, but maybe of a time, too. And, piano and we put together a like series this. right at the time when educational television, based in those days in Ann Arbor, said, please bring some entertainment content. Let's get away from lectures and one camera. Let's have some fun. Let's have some costumes. Let's have some music. And we happened to hit with that idea at that time. So your combination of a little humor, a little history, a little knowledge uh, launched a whole a whole series and a whole career beyond that. Well, and of course, I was able to take the basic texture of that, sing, play, talk, into concert work and working start, starting with nightclubs and then getting into the concert field. And uh, the business was very good to me for many, many years. So what is there to learn from a career spent entertaining? Well, I'll tell you one thing you learn. I'm a white kid from Colorado who lucked into an interesting line of work, and I wouldn't be there with that music without a lot of forgotten African Americans who had it very tough and who gave us a lot of music that is finally being revealed, certainly with the uh, discovery of Scott Joplin, 40 years ago. He was unknown for all those years. He was the man. I had the privilege of working with U.B. Blake, who was uh, one of the great pianists and composers, and he lived to be 100 years old. And I had the honor of being the MC at his 100th birthday party at the Schubert Theater in New York, 1983. So um, I owe a debt more than I can articulate. Max Morath, thanks for coming to the playlist. Thank you, Karen.